Heading, Simplicity of Method, subheading, Christ has shown how to help humanity. Read the record of how the Savior fed the multitude with five loaves and two fishes. This merciful provision for temporal need helped to fasten in the minds of the people the gracious words of truth which he had spoken. In this miracle, Christ has shown how medical missionary work is to be bound up with the ministry of the word. His disciples are to take the bread of life and the water of salvation and give it to those who are longing for spiritual help. And as there is need, they are to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. Thus they do double service for the master. The beauty and utility of the work we do for God consists in its symmetry and harmony and in all its round adaptability and efficiency. Manuscript 5, 1901. Subheading, Come Close to Suffering Humanity. Christ has left us an example that we should follow in his steps. He always drew near to the most needy, to the most hopeless, and attracted by his sympathy, they came close to him. He assures every suffering, needy, sinful soul that he will never want for a great physician to give him spiritual help. We stand too far away from suffering humanity. Let us draw nearer to Christ, that our souls may be filled with his grace and with a desire to give this grace to others. Letter 17, 1903. Subheading, Impractical Lines. We have to remember that the work of reaching souls cannot be confined to any one method. Gospel medical missionary work is to be carried forward not in the precision of one man's lines, but in Christ's lines. All that is done is to bear the impress of the Holy Spirit. We are to work as Christ worked in the same practical lines, then we shall be safe. The Divine Commission needs no reform. Christ's way of presenting truth cannot be improved upon. The work who tries to bring methods that will attract the worldly-minded, supposing that this will remove the objections that they feel to taking up the cross, lessens his influence. Preserve the simplicity of godliness. Letter 123, 1903. Subheading, Prepared to Give Simple Treatments. Let our ministers who have gained an experience in preaching the word learn how to give simple treatments and then go forth as medical missionary evangelists. Workers, gospel medical missionaries are needed now. Manuscript 141, 1903. Subheading, Teaching the Principles of Healthful Living. Gospel workers should be able to give instruction in the principles of healthful living. There is sickness everywhere, and much of it might be prevented by attention to the laws of health. The people need to see the bearing of health principles upon their well-being for both this life and for the life to come. They need to be awakened to their responsibility for the human habitation fitted up by their Creator as His dwelling place, and over which He desires them to be faithful stewards. Thousands need and would gladly receive instruction concerning the simple methods of treating the sick, methods that are taking the place of the use of poisonous drugs. There is great need of instruction in regard to dietetic reform. Wrong habits of eating and the use of unhealthful food are in no small degree responsible for the intemperance and crime and wretchedness that curse the world. In teaching health principles, keep before the mind the great object of reform that its purpose is to secure the highest development of body and mind and soul. Show that the laws of nature, being the laws of God, are designed for our good, that obedience to them promotes happiness in this life and aids in the preparation for the life to come. Encourage the people to study that marvelous organism, the human system, and the laws by which it is governed. Those who perceive the evidences of God's love, who understand something of the wisdom and beneficence of His laws, and the results of obedience will come to regard their duties and obligations from an altogether different point of view. Instead of looking upon an observance of the laws of health as a matter of sacrifice or self-denial, they will regard it as it really is an inestimable blessing. Every gospel worker should feel that to teach the principles of healthful living is a part of his appointed work. Of this work there is a great need, and the world is open for it. Councils on Health, pages 389, 390, 1914. Subheading, to instruct in healthful cookery. Cooking schools should be established 
and house-to-house instruction should be given in the art of cooking wholesome food. Old and young should learn how to cook more simply. Wherever the truth is presented, the people are to be taught how to prepare food in a simple yet appetizing way. They are to be shown that a nourishing diet can be provided without the use of flesh foods. Teach the people that it is better to know how to keep well than how to cure disease. Our physicians should be wise educators, warning all against self-indulgence and showing that abstinence from the things that God has prohibited is the only way to prevent ruin of body and mind. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 161, 1909. Subheading, Importance of Cooking Schools. Cooking schools are to be established in many places. This work may begin in a humble way, but as intelligent cooks do their best to enlighten others, the Lord will give them skill and understanding. The word of the Lord is, Forbid them not, for I will reveal myself to them as their instructor. He will work with those who carry out his plans, teaching the people how to bring about a reformation in their diet by the preparation of healthful, inexpensive foods. Thus the poor will be encouraged to adopt the principles of health reform. They will be helped to become industrious and self-reliant. It has been presented to me that men and women of capability were being taught of God how to prepare wholesome, palatable foods in an acceptable manner. Many of these were young, and there were also those of mature age. I have been instructed to encourage the conducting of cooking schools in all places where medical missionary work is being done. Every inducement to lead the people to reform must be held out before them. Let as much light as possible shine upon them. Teach them to make every improvement that they can in the preparation of food and encourage them to impart to others that which they learn. Testimonies, Volume 7, page 113, 1902. Subheading, Going from House to House to Teach Cooking. Some should labor from house to house, giving instruction in the art of cooking wholesome foods. Many, many will be rescued from physical, mental, and moral degeneracy through the influence of health reform. These principles will commend themselves to those who are seeking for light, and such will advance from this to receive the full truth for this time. Review and Herald, June 6, 1912. Subheading, educate, educate, educate. We must educate, educate, educate pleasantly and intelligently. We must preach the truth, pray the truth, and live the truth, bringing it with its gracious health-giving influences within the reach of those who know it not. As the sick are brought into touch with the life-giver, their faculties of mind and body will be renewed. But in order for this to be, they must practice self-denial and be temperate in all things. Thus only can they be saved from physical and spiritual death and restored to health. When the human machinery moves in harmony with the life-giving arrangements of God, as brought to light through the gospel, disease is overcome and health springs forth speedily. When human beings work in union with the life-giver, who offered up his life for them, happy thoughts fill the mind. Body and mind and soul are sanctified. Human beings learn of the great teacher, and all upon which they look ennobles and enriches their thoughts. The affections are drawn out in gladness and thankfulness to the Creator. The life of the man who is renewed in the image of Christ is as a light shining in darkness. Medical Ministry, pages 262-263, 1905. Subheading, Broad Views of the Work. There is a science in dealing with those who seem especially weak. If we would teach others, we ourselves must first learn of Christ. We need broad views that we may do true medical missionary work. We must exercise tact in dealing with those who seem to be ignorant and out of the way. By persevering effort on their behalf, we must help them to become useful in the Lord's work. They will respond readily to a patient, tender, loving interest. We are to cooperate with the Lord Jesus in restoring the inefficient and the erring to intelligence and purity. This work ranks equally in importance with the work of the gospel ministry. Medical Ministry, pages 208, 209, 1905.